Well, they're here again. I just saw them at the entrance. Well, you go over this side. I'll look over here. We've just got to find Brady. Oh, oh, Mr. Brady, they're here again, the three of them. Where? Over there. They're just coming in. We'll sit right here, so we can see everything. Oh, Eleanor, do you really think we'll see something objectionable? I always do. How do you do, Mr. Brady? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Worthington. So you've come to pay our little dash salon another visit. Yes, and I brought a new member of my league, Mrs. Fletcher. How do you do? And of course you remember my vice president, Mrs. Langley. Oh, Susie, that's fine. That's just fine. Uh, have a seat, Mrs. Thank you very much. Oh, put it right here, please. You're a fine woman, ma'am, to be taking such an interest in improving me place. Thank you. The old battle axe. I hope she skids on the wax floor and breaks her neck. Tom, if that walking gin bottle didn't have such a darn nice smile, I'd ask you to throw him out. Yeah, I know. I see him. He would come here on the night when Mrs. Worthington's here. My golly, you know, every time she comes here, he turns up. You think he did it on purpose? Young man, where is that policewoman? I've been here several times and she's never where she's supposed to be. She's over there. Now, darling, you know I was only teasing you. I'm really crazy about you. I love you so much I can't sleep at night. Pardon me, officer, but may I ask just what you are doing? Certainly. I'm helping my friend John write a love letter. Write a love letter? For a sailor? Well, sailors do fall in love, you know. I'm quite familiar with the old saying. A port in every girl. Oh, I mean, a girl in every port. But will you tell me, do the taxpayers pay you for writing love letters for the Navy? Well, there's plenty of things I do every day of my life that I don't get paid for. But I don't complain. Officer, I hope you don't mind my telling you that there are several couples on the floor who need a little supervision. Well, I hope you don't mind my telling you that there are plenty of attendants out there to call my attention to any unbecoming conduct. From what I've just seen, they're not competent to judge what is unbecoming conduct. What did you see? Several people dancing too closely together. And I distinctly saw two of them snatching kisses. Oh, well. It's a warm night. They're young. Hey, officer, how do you spell passionately? Uh, well, if I were you, John, I think I'd say affectionately. Hello, pig. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Um, well, what did you come down here for, then? Why didn't you wait like at home? I've just made up my mind to, to go away. At first, I was going to leave you a note. But... Note? Say, I'd just like to see you walk out on me and leave me a note. I know. That's why I came down. So, so... Uh... Why, you little fool. Come on, kid. I want another fan. Okay, mister. I'm coming. Pig, I want you to promise you'll wait until I'm through with this dance. But I don't want to wait. I... All right. I'll refuse to dance with the men and lose my job. Hurry up, girl. The music's nearly half over. Well, what do you say? Do I lose my job or are you going to wait for me? All right. I'll wait. What's the matter, baby? You feeling lonesome? You look like you've lost your last friend. You know, you're a swell-looking kid, and with a face like that, I could try to make plenty of dough. All right, Bill. 
Get off the dime. Okay, sweetheart. I'm just beginning to understand, officer, why you haven't the proper discipline here. These people all talk to you as though they actually were friends of yours. Worthington, that's an awfully nice thing to say to me. You know, I like to think they are my friends. What are you doing here? I've paid my admission. I'll stay as long as I plan. Get out of here before I put you out. What makes you think you could put me out? This. And I have more authority in my two hands. Oh, you're going to get tough, huh? On your way. Okay, Grandma. I'm not going because you told me to. I got to keep a date, see? like you can't get another kind of job at being a cop. You tell Big Bill Lewis for me that no matter how much pull he's got, I'm going to get him. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't stop butting into our affairs, you're going to get what's coming to you. Do you get me, you old bat? What did that man say to you? It doesn't matter. I just want to be left alone. I don't want to bother you. I just want to help you. I know. And next you'll start telling me nothing's as bad as it seems. Pretty low, aren't you? Go away. Leave me alone. Please. I'm sure you don't want to tell your troubles to a policewoman. Now, I have the loveliest club. Just the right thing for a little girl like you. Can't you leave me alone? I don't want your club or you or anything. Worthington, why did you interfere? I was getting evidence on that man. Evidence? What was he doing? Have you ever heard of the wages of sin? Certainly. The wages of sin is death. Not always. That man collects those wages. I wanted proof. And now you've antagonized that girl. She was most impudent. And I'm sure any girl who talks like that is not respectable. Hello, darling. Having a good time? Uh, who was that sailor writing to? His girl. I hope to get him to marry her soon. I sincerely trust he doesn't have to marry her. No, he doesn't have to. But I think all things considered, it might be better. Um, by the way, who was that young man that just spoke to you? Uh, I think his name is, uh, Anthony Desmond. You think? Hello, Auntie, dear. Picking up little fallen girls? Be a good scout and save one for Anthony. Your nephew? Unfortunately. Why did he come here? Principally to annoy me and interfere with my work. Well, I'll promise you to see that he doesn't dance too close or snatch too many stolen kisses. Thank you. Augusta. Will you speak of Desmond Soak? Honestly, a girl would have to know you get to to keep that guy in his place. I think I'd better be going. Uh, it's getting late. There he goes again. That guy ought to be a chiropractor. <laughs> hey, uh, what are you going to do later tonight after you finish dancing? Soak my feet. Oh, that's ducky. Hello, Anthony. Hello, officer. I don't want to seem too personal, but uh, when were you sober last? Oh, well, I don't remember. I, I never remember unpleasant things. Where are you going when you leave here tonight? I don't know. I guess over to Louis. Uh, tell me, Anthony. Are you handy with a hammer? Hammer? 
Yes, you see, I've, uh... Um, I've got a table that needs fixing. <laughs> and I thought if you... Uh, uh, you're trying to keep me away from Louie's, I know. <laughs> well, I thought if you'd come up and fix that table, I'd have the girls give you some homemade apple pie. What girls? Oh, just some girls I'm taking care of. I'll be there. <laughs> Listen, be a good egg, will you, and skip this dance. I'll give you two for one ticket later on. Okay, sister. <laughs> Hey, Tony. You want to dance again? You like my wrestling. Can the comedy. I want you to do me a favor. You see that girl over there? Little glad eyes? Her name's Peggy. Go get her. Talk to her. Dance with her. Do anything, but keep her here until I get back. Cinch. Ethel, quick. Did a girl check a suitcase with you here tonight? No, not tonight. Thanks. Guess who it is and win a prize. <laughs> you win, it's me. Why, I'm sorry. I'm being a nuisance. But come on, dance with me anyhow. You don't understand. Yes, I do. I've been watching you all evening, and what you need is, is someone to make you laugh. But something's very funny. All the rest of my women laugh at me, but uh, you sort of slow me down. Hey, Tom, will you lend me a dollar? i got to get some stuff for the girls and pay day until tomorrow. Sure, take five. Oh, thanks. I gather you got your hands full keeping them parole dames at your house. <laughs> Do you really think you'll ever make good women out of the likes of them? Oh, they're not bad, Tom. Just mixed up a bit. That's all. Thanks for the pot. Augusta? Yeah? There's a girl, a friend of mine, that came to say goodbye to me. She going away? Well, that's what she says, but I have an awful hunch there ain't any return ticket from the place she's going to. Where is she now? I left her with Anthony. Told him to keep her here. Well, there's Anthony. But he's alone. Anthony! Come here. Anthony, where's that girl you were just dancing with? I don't know. She left me all of a sudden. Honestly, I, I, I wasn't doing a thing. Oh, never mind. You wait here. I'll get her. Idiot. I've got a good mind to spank you. If there's anything I despise, it's a coward. Come on now, snap out of it. Don't. I want all Don't. fiddlesticks. <laughs> all right. Get that out of your system, and then you can tell me his name. But how did you know? Never mind that. Come on now. Dry your tears. I'm going to take you home with me. Lord only knows where I'm going to put you, but I'll find a spot. You'll like the girls. Where's my bag, for heaven's sake? You'll like those girls up in my house. Gladys and Norman Evelyn. <laughs> I'd about given up hope. I didn't think you had a laugh in you. You're so ridiculous. You'd make anyone laugh. <laughs> Shall I hit myself again? Anthony, did you fix the table? I forgot all about it. I tell you the truth, I couldn't find the hammer. It's better go home now. Peggy must be tired. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow. Don't you want me to come tomorrow? What for? Fix the table. <laughs> All right. Go home now. I want to see you before you go to bed. Okay. Don't keep her up too late. <laughs> Night, Anthony. Peggy, there's something I want to give you before I go. What? Close your eyes and hold out your hand. Before. She hit me with in case you didn't like it. Good night, Peggy. Maybe I'll let you see me tomorrow. Good night. Did you see? Now what? Is that lady cop home yet? I'm the one that's been phoning. Yeah, she's here. So glad to see you, Augusta. I want to talk to you. Private. 
Come on in here where we won't be disturbed. I've heard you're a straight cop. Are you? I think so. What's the trouble? Plenty. Put the baby down on the bed and we'll talk. I'm Mary Sloan. Used to be with Big Bill Lewis. Oh, I thought that would interest you. It does. Why did you come to me? Because I want my baby to have a chance. Does Lewis know about the baby? No. That's why I ran away from the Lewis crowd when, when I knew about him. And now Lewis is trying to find me. Why? Because I'm going straight now. Lewis thinks I might talk. I know too much. How much? Plenty. Well? I swiped some of his canceled checks. Canceled checks, receipts, and a lot of my private papers that I don't want anybody to see. I'm not a magician. You've had plenty of time to find her. Don't alibi. I want her found tonight. That investigation from the district attorney's office will break any day now, but, but nothing. Blackie says he's sure that he saw her going into the Bancroft Hotel. I kept them for my own protection. This afternoon, I ran into Chuck Johnson. He works for Lewis, and Chuck still kind of likes me. He said Lewis was after me. What do you want me to do? Take care of my kid till I've shaken off Lewis. Will you do it? Yes. Shake. You're regular. If you want me for anything, I'm at the Bancroft Hotel, right around the corner. Mary, what did you do with those canceled checks? Safe deposit box. I'll let you have them when I know you better. What? Randall. What's the alibi now? Somebody must have tipped her off. She wouldn't answer the door and I couldn't break it down. Otherwise, it'd have been a flock of rumors in the hall in five seconds. Is Barry there with you now? Good. They don't know him down at headquarters. Let me talk to him. Barry, listen. You were held up last night. Oh, yes, you were. Tonight, coming out of a coffee joint near the Bancroft Hotel, you recognize the dame who held you up. You followed her into the hotel and saw her go into her room. Uh-huh. Oh, I get you. You want me to go down and swear at a warrant, eh? But what good is Mary Sloan to us in jail? She'll never get there. You see, he told me that since we were going to be married in a few weeks, that... that... And that everything was going to be beautiful. I know. The same old story. Well, run along to bed now and try to forget the whole foolish business. Remember, there's always tomorrow. Good night, Augusta. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Who is it? Police. Open the door. You're under arrest. Arrest? What for? And where's your warrant? Right here. The man just swore it out. Said you held him up last night. Come on, get your things on. Officer, listen, this is a frame. Honest it is. Tell that to the judge. Just get dressed. All right. Where are you going? To dress in private. Any objections? No. Leave that door open.
you nearly ready yet? Get here in a hurry. They, they didn't get her. And where do you suppose she is now? Where? In that policewoman's house. What a nice spot I'm in. You are in a jam. That nosy police dame's just laying for you. Oh, shut up. Let me think. Where's Jack? At the Rainbow. Why? Get me the number. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'll get Mary Sloan, and I'll get that old hen off the police force for good. Here it is. Crescent 6132. Crescent 6132. Jack used to know one of the girls at that policewoman's house. I'm going to pull the best gag you ever heard. I believe you, Mary. I think you're telling a straight story. I'm scared. I'm sure I saw Randall in that car. If Lewis gets me tonight... I won't be eating my breakfast tomorrow. Oh, this puts me in a dreadful spot. What do you mean? Well, technically, you were under arrest. But it was all a frame. I know that, but I can't prove it. I get you. So what? If I turn you in, you go up for trial. But when you get out... Sure, Lewis will be waiting for me. That's right. As long as Lewis is free, you'll always be in danger. Until I can get Lewis in jail, he'll never be safe. Daddy Watson, do you know what is dumber than a dumb Irishman? Two bright sweet. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Guster? Sure, you have laughed at one of my jokes tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But you see, I'm worried about a new girl that's up at my house. Yeah, well, I always said you took a great chance in keeping them girls. <laughs> well, suppose they broke parole or something. Oh. Where would you be? Get out. My girls will never let me down. <laughs> You're a scout here now, you. Come on. Entrez <laughs> vous, mademoiselle. Honestly, you're the most idiotic person I've ever met. You can't be serious for five minutes. You know, you've told me that four times tonight. It's true, you've done nothing but make me laugh all day. Oh, now, don't go in. It's early. Sit down for a minute. Oh, what a night. The moon, the garden, the music, romance. Will you marry me, Peggy? Are you crazy? Sure. Any man who wants to marry is crazy. But I have a hunch since I met you that I'd feel funny if you weren't around. You know, I've had nightmares nearly every night. Well, since I was a kid. You poor little boy. Oh, it's been awful. When I finally awake, I, I'm as scared as a three-year-old. So I was thinking... Yes, thing, you were thinking. That if you were there to say to me, Now, there, there, don't be frightened, Anthony. You would say that, wouldn't you, Peggy? Oh, Anthony, you dear fool. That's the nicest thing a man ever said to any woman. Desmond. 
I'm a bit worried. I don't think Augusta would like this. I mean, what harm is there in having a little party? Are we gone, Are we gone, I think we're gone, Good night, Mr. Gilbert. Good night. What are these two tramps come from? Oh, I knew Jack a long time ago. He just dropped in with a friend and I could bring us another drink. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Peggy, how did all this start? I don't know, Norma. Tony and I just got here. Get out of here. It's about time to phone that Worthington dame. That party ought to be going good and strong by now. Maine, 4562. Hello, uh... Mrs. Worthington? Yes? Yes. I know Policewoman Winthrop quite well. Well, as president of the Girls' Protective League, I think you should know that there's really a shocking party going on at her place tonight. Yeah, those girls are on parole, you know. But she's supposed to be taken care of. And another thing you should know... How dreadful. I'll go to headquarters at once. This is terrible. Augusta must have been delayed in traffic. And I can't make them stop. I'll bet I could if I was out there. But Augusta told me never to leave the room when strangers came. I know. Augusta made a mistake when she allowed delinquent girls in her house. Delinquent girls? Why, aren't you? I should say not. I was a shoplifter. I'm going to bed. And when you get out of here tonight, don't come back. Hooray! More people coming to the party! Didn't I tell you? I want the meaning of this and I want the truth. It's quite evident what's happened. You permit girls on parole the most disgraceful sort of life. Mrs. Worthington, this is my house. Don't forget that. Norma, what happened? I don't know. The whole two guys came to call on Gladys and brought enough liquor to get an army drunk. Just as I supposed. One of Bill Lewis's rats. And this, I suppose, is another. Michael? Get out of here, you heels. And who, may I ask, is Bill Lewis? You wouldn't know if I told you. I don't care for your tone. You don't care for anything except interfering at the wrong time. Michael, who sent that call in? She phoned the captain and insisted he sent two of us out here. Said she got a phone call from someone about a wild party. Augusta, I'd rather cut my right hand off and have this happen to you. Are you in league with this woman? Or are you going to arrest these people? There ain't nothing to arrest them for. They weren't disturbing the peace. That's right, lady. None of the neighbors complained. I see. But you haven't wasted your time, gentlemen, coming out here. There's an escaped criminal hiding in this house. Pardon me, madam, but you didn't tell the captain anything like that. Sit tight, old timer. I'll be back soon. Mary Sloan is here. After being arrested for a holdup last night, she escaped. She's a dangerous criminal. Oh, rat tat. It isn't true, is it? If this is true, Augusta, they'll break you for it. They'll throw you off the force. Kindly search the house, officer. All right. All right. Don't worry now, Lewis. She makes a break from the cops. This time, we'll get her for sure. There she goes. Come on. A little faster. 
So you're taking me for a ride, Bill. <laughs> what on earth ever gave you that idea, Mary? Don't try to kid me, Bill. Take the North Road, Michael, and hurry. We've got to find that car. Give me those canceled checks. Much as I regret it, I'll have to suspend you. Have you anything to say? Certainly I've got something to say, but not about myself. That's not important. Technically, I know I was wrong. I can't explain that now. Why? Because I haven't any proof. But I know who killed Mary Sloan. And I know that she was framed before she was arrested. Meaning? Big Bill Lewis. You'll have five days to get that proof before your trial comes up. Of course, if you could prove all that, I think it would make a lot of difference. But I don't think you'll get the proof. Why? Because the whole police department has been trying for years to get something on Lewis and failed. That's because you men have to be technical. Now, me, I don't have to be technical. I risked losing my job to get it, and I've lost my job. Now I'm going to risk losing a good deal more. Bye, Captain. Just a minute, Augustus. I'll have to ask you for your badge. Is that necessary? Yes. You know that. Sure, I know. Am I to understand from the eloquent address your spokesman has just made that uh, you ladies have come here as a committee to request the reinstatement of Officer Winthrop? Right on the button the first time, Captain. You see, Captain, the way we got it, Felix, Augusta broke one of your rules, but she was doing it for a good reason. Oh, honest, Captain. Augusta's the swellest woman that ever lived, even if she is a cop. I see. And don't you like cops in general? Oh, you got us wrong, Captain. Cops is fine. We gotta have them and all that. But what we mean is, we know Augusta is absolutely on the level. And if we don't know a straight cop from a crooked one, who does? Well, ladies, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think a lot of Augusta myself. But at present, my hands are tied. And now, Auntie, maybe after this you won't be such a fool. Augusta knew what she was doing, all right. Yes. Yes, Anthony. I realized that this morning when I saw the papers. That poor girl murdered. I just heard that Augusta lost her job, too. So I called her house and found out all those girls had given her the air. She feels terrible. Do you think... That is... Do you think she'd forgive me if I went to see her? Why, well, Andy, you're a good scout after all. <laughs> oh, now. Come on, now. Why, you're crying. That's the first time you've kissed me since you wore short pants. 
Well, here's one for the time when I wore no pants. Hello, Augusta. Oh, we've been out for a walk. Yeah, we, we've been out for a walk, Augusta. Well, it's a swell time to be taking a walk. You know that the dishes aren't washed and the beds aren't made? Have you changed the baby? <gasps> Gosh, we forgot. Uh-huh. You see, we had to be there at 10 o'clock. Be where? Well, uh, uh, she means that we wanted to get to the uh, art gallery when it opened. Art gallery? Yeah, we wanted to see some pictures. And we didn't want to be there when there was a big crowd around. Well, I'll art gallery you if you don't get in and clean this house up and change that baby. Go on now, all of you. Gee, ain't that swell? I got to talk it like her old self again. Yeah. <sighs> Well, what do you want now? I want to see Mrs. Winthrop. Officer Winthrop to you, and what's more... That'll do, Norma. Show Mrs. Worthington in. All right. What can I do for you this time, Mrs. Worthington? You can forgive me for being an interfering old fool, if you will. You're just in time for tea. Isn't that nice? I'll have the girls wash some cups. They're awful careless about their housekeeping cover. Norma, will you get some tea ready for Mrs. Worthington? Officer, you're one of the biggest women I ever met. <laughs> and you have to be. That's police regulation. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? There's no use my apologizing to you for what I've done. But I can ask you to let me explain. You see, I'm a rather lonely person. I never had any children. My husband, Theodore, died when I was quite young. I suppose that's why I formed the Girls' Protective League. I like young people around me. I understand. I meant well, but I suppose I went about things in the wrong way. You know, that's just like me. I always go about things in the wrong way. But when I find I've made a mistake, I just throw it out and start over. Will you just listen to Augusta lying like a gentleman? Anthony says you're in danger. Danger? Yes, from that Lewis person. When I came in just now, I saw a man watching your house. I'm not surprised. Aren't you afraid? Not very. You see, they don't know how much that poor girl told me. I wish I could help you. Perhaps you can. Two heads are better than one, and I'm puzzled. You want to tell me? Yes. You see, Mary Sloan, had some important evidence against Lewis that she kept in a safe deposit box. Where? I'm not sure. But I think she had the key to the box in her purse. They told me at headquarters, though, that nothing was found. Dear, dear, I wonder. Listen to them two, will you? They'll be kissing each other in a second. Augusta, do you suppose the man who discovered the body found her purse? Maybe he did. Wasn't I dumb not to think of that? You mean there's something in my suggestion? Maybe there is. I'm going to find that man. And I'm going with you. Those men may follow you. Oh, no, you're not. I've got another plan. Is your car here? Yes. Come with me. Hey, kids, come here. Your aunt is here. And her and Augusta are doing a regular sister act. That's great. I had something to do with that. I'm glad you did something. Oh, gee, Peggy, don't stay mad at Anthony. He didn't mean to get drunk last night, so neither did I. I only had about one little drink. One drink? Yeah, from the cork to the bottom of the bottle. Augusta, I'm surprised my dress fits you so well. Listen, everybody, from now on, I'm going to be Mrs. Worthington. When I leave here, I don't want to be followed. She's going to be me. <sighs> Tony. Give that card to your aunt's chauffeur. It'll explain everything to him, but I want you to say this good and loud. Mrs. Worthington is leaving here in five minutes. Right. Excuse me now, will you? I've got to give the girls some orders. This is cleaning day, you know. I wonder what Augusta's going to do now. I don't know. Now, girls, I've decided to name our baby. We're going to call him Theodore. Theodore? Why? After Mrs. Worthington's husband. Oh, gee. She ain't going to adopt him, is she? Yes, she is. Of course, she don't know it yet. Now, while I'm out, I want you to see that Mrs. Worthington and Theodore become very well acquainted. You understand? Yes, Augusta. Okay. 
Now, keep your eye on my girls while I'm gone, will you? All right, Augusta. How do I look? Lovely. I thought so. Hey, Mrs. Wilson, you want to meet our baby? I'd love to. What a dear little chap. How old is he? Well, we don't exactly know. But his eyes were open when we got him. May I hold him? Sure. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bell... Did you get it? Yep. But it was empty. Oh, dear. What will we do? I don't know. Never mind. I'll get it for you. Never mind, darling. I'll buy you a new one. Hey, look. There's something in it. God for your foot, Eleanor. That's the key. I give permission to Augusta Winthrop to open my safe deposit box in the First National Bank. Mary Sloan. Oh. Poor girl. There was something really fine about her, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Yeah. I don't believe that baby's going to have such a bad inheritance after all. He's a darling. You know, it's the strangest thing, but the little chap's taken quite a fancy to me. Really? Isn't that funny? He don't like me a bit. Oh, Mrs. Worthington, I'm stuck again. You hold him, will you? I've been helping Evelyn with her jigsaw puzzle. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, you sap. What do you want to do? Make a liar out of me and cheat yourself out of a good home? <laughs> now, don't bother me for a little while, Evelyn. I've got to talk to Augusta. Excuse me, will you? <coughs> there, you see? Cries the minute he looks at me. Now, now, mustn't cry. Come to me, darling. What are you going to do with what you find in the bank? Turn it over to headquarters? No, that wouldn't prove the murder. I've got another plan. It's dangerous, but I'm going to try it. But you know already that Lewis killed her. Isn't that enough? Yeah. Any smart lawyer could make a fool out of me. I couldn't convict Lewis on such weak evidence as that. What is your plan? Can I help you? Yes, you can. I want to stay at your house tonight. You see, tomorrow I want to have a visitor. Someone I don't want to be seen coming from here. A visitor? Mm-hmm. A man. Famous for his pen work. A writer? How do you do? I'm Mrs. Worthington. Aloysius O'Hulahan at your service. I'm glad to meet you, ma'am. Won't you sit down? Oh, not me. <laughs> I know me manners. <laughs> you don't catch me making a mistake like that. After you, Mrs. Worthington. Hello, Aloysius. Hello there, Augusta. By golly, you're looking as beautiful as ever. Oh, cut out the blinding now. Let's get down to business. Look at this. I want you to do the best job you've ever done in all your life. Do you think you can have it for me by night? Oh, sure, this will be easy. <laughs> this will be a new experience for me doing a bit of my penmanship for the law. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I'll have it on time. A great deal depends on this. Oh, sure, it's as good as done. <laughs> I thought maybe you were sore at me after that little party. Shut up, Jack. I ain't got much time to talk. I need a little dough, see? If I was to tell you where to find those things that Lewis is looking for, would it be worth a half a grand to you? It is? Okay. Augusta is at Mrs. Worthington's house. She's going to leave there this morning dressed like Mrs. Worthington to go to a safe deposit board. That'll be worth a grand. I'll take care of it. Just a 
minute, Officer Winthrop. I want to speak to you. I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, madam. I thought you were somebody else. Home, William. Out. Why won't you marry me? You said if I helped Augusta, you'd forgive me, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, forgive you. But I didn't say I would marry you. Hey, what do you mean? I can't explain. Well, you're not going to pull that old wheezy line about another man being in your life, are you? And I don't want to hear you say that you thought you were in love at the time. Me, I, I never even thought I was in love. But... You're a man. Yes, I know. A man is supposed to laugh about his past, but a woman is supposed to explain. Do you love me? Oh, Anthony, so very much. And I love you so very much. Oh, thank you so much that... You're always making excuses, Randall. The idea of that policewoman making a fool of you again. But Gladys told you... Oh, Jack. never mind all that. I want to find out where she is now. Listen, Bill, a messenger just brought this. She must have been up to something. Or she wouldn't have... What a break. Listen to this. I have some papers that I think belong to you. Mary Sloan gave them to me. It closed as a sample. You may have the rest of them for $10,000. I've lost my job and a lady must eat. If you're interested, bring cash to room 608 Granger Hotel at 9 p.m. tonight. Augusta Winthrop. Hey, listen, Bill, I wouldn't fall for that other stuff too quick. It may be a trap. She might have dictaphones in that room. Don't worry. I've already thought of that. That lady cop's going to get the surprise of her life. I'm very worried. Supposing something should happen to you. Then you'd have to come to my funeral. Don't. I do hope you'll be careful. Hello, Anthony. Everything's arranged. They're putting the dictaphones in the hotel room now. Oh, thanks, Anthony. You've been a great help. Say, can I take a hand? No. But if Lewis suspects anything, he'll put a bullet through you. That's what I'm so worried about. That's a chance I have to take. Now, don't argue with me. Come. Oh. Come in, Mr. Lewis. It's a warm evening, isn't it? Yes, Mrs. Winthrop. It isn't officer anymore, is it? No, it isn't. Sit down, won't you? Not a very good view from here, is there? No, there isn't, but the room's all right. I find it rather stuffy, the warm night, you know. So if you don't mind, I'd rather have our little conference in another room. Well, but I've arranged for this room. Uh, yes, I know. But sometimes there's such a thing as making too many arrangements. Don't you think so? I really think we ought to get another room. Well, I'll ask the clerk. Oh, don't bother. I'll do it myself. Room clerk. Mrs. Winthrop doesn't like this room. Have you another? The only room we have empty is up on the top floor. Isn't as good as them she has now, sir. Well, that's all right. She says she'll take it anyhow. After you, Mrs. Winthrop. Don't you like this room? Oh, yes, of course. It's quite all right.
Now, Mrs. Winthrop, let's get down to business. So, you have something for me? Yes. And you have something for me. You're asking a lot of money just for some old papers. Yes, perhaps. But you see, isn't all I've got. I know who killed Mary Sloan. Very interesting. Who? Oh, let's have no more of this nonsense, Mr. Lewis. I followed you that night. I got there a few minutes after Mary Sloan's body had been thrown from the car. She was still alive. That's impossible. She got it straight through the heart. Or so I heard. Nevertheless, she was still alive. Are you familiar with her handwriting? Yes, what of it? She lived long enough to write a few lines. I, I found this in her hand. I was going to turn it in at headquarters, but... You see, they fired me. This seems a good chance to lay something by for my old age. Do you want to see this? Yes, I wouldn't mind. Now, Mr. Lewis, would you rather give me that money or go to the electric chair? Neither. Get away from that door and give me the rest of that stuff. No. Uh, listen, you old fool. I mean what I'm saying. Give them to me. You wouldn't dare shoot me. Oh, yes, I would. You think I'm going to let you send me to the chair? I knew this was a stall all along. That's why I made you change rooms. Just the same, you're afraid to shoot me. Oh, no, I'm not. I have a letter in your own handwriting. I can prove that you tried to blackmail me. Well, that won't help you if you shot me. No. I'll tell them that when I refused to give you money, you pulled a gun on me. I tried to get it away from you. In the struggle, it went off. And I can prove that this gun is yours. This time, I'll do a better job than the one I did on Mary Sloan. Now, give them to me. No! Lucky you. I aimed at your head. Thanks, Tony. That was swell. Augusta, you know what I've done? I've shot my way into a wedding. All right, Dad, take him away. Come on. We certainly got enough to send him to the chair. You're a smart woman, Augusta, having a dictaphone in this room. Oh, that wasn't anything. I knew he'd want to switch on me, so I just fixed it up with a desk clerk. Why haven't you wondered? But weren't you scared to death? No. What was there to be scared of? Oh. Well, I've had a pretty full week. I got Peggy and Anthony married. Sent Lewis up. Got my job back. Now, the only thing I've got to do is to find someone to adopt that baby. Augusta, I've decided to adopt him myself. Why, Eleanor, have you forgotten that baby? But that's not the baby's fault. And after all, Augusta, you should learn to be more broad-minded about such things.